The West Puget Community Connection Podcast. This is where we learn about the people of our community. We learn what they do, and more importantly, why they do it. Subscribe by email at westpugetcommunityconnection.com. We look forward to learning more about you. If you need someone dependable to set up or update your website, manage your social media and marketing, produce videos, produce audio, or if you need help writing and publishing, then I'd like to ask you to consult with me. Hi, I'm Vincent Alexander, and I'm a creative consultant. I live in Port Townsend, Washington. I love fishing, agate hunting, and my girlfriend. I do this kind of work because I love being creative, I love to help make people's dreams come true, and I can do a lot of this work remotely from anywhere, so I can travel with my girlfriend, visit my family in California, and enjoy the great outdoors. Let's talk websites. I've been building websites since 1999. I can work with almost any platform, WordPress, Squarespace, you name it. If you need a new website set up, or a webmaster to help you maintain and update an old website, Vincent Alexander is your guy. Let's talk social media and search engine marketing. I've been nailing top positions on Google since 1999, and I know how to help you do the same. If you need help managing your social media marketing like Facebook ads, YouTube videos, Instagram, I can help with that too. Let's talk video production. Maybe you want to make a video commercial for your business, or maybe you'll hire me to video your band performing your next show, or to produce a music video for your band, or your book release party, or graduation ceremony, or welcome video for your website or video for your comedy group, or fishing videos, or real estate marketing videos. How about a demonstration or how-to video? Or whatever kind of video you want to produce, I can help. Let's talk audio production. Want to start your own podcast? Produce an audiobook? How about interviewing family members to record family history or an autobiography? Or maybe you want to record some music I can set up some microphones, I can produce sounds, I can use stock sound clips to produce professional sounding audio. Let's talk writing. Need help writing a book, a song, a story, a poem? I can help with your creative process. And when it comes time to publish your book, music, or other media on Amazon, Apple iBooks, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, etc., I can help with that too. So if you're a creative go-getter or your organization needs one on their team, fill out the contact form at vincentchiafalo.com right now or call 360-390-5293 or email me vincent at vincentchiafalo.com. Then I will contact you for a free discovery call where we'll discuss your needs in detail. Then I'll provide a proposal and client agreement. And once you agree, we can get to work at my hourly rate of 25 to 55 per hour, depending on the task I'm performing. I keep a careful log of every minute I spend working on your project and what I did during that time. I'll invoice you periodically by email, and you can pay via debit or credit through PayPal, or pay me by check or cash, whichever you prefer. There's no binding contract, so you can work with me as much or as little as you want without any strings attached. So go now to vincentchiafalo.com and fill out the contact form. I look forward to helping you with all of your creative projects. The West Puget Community Connection podcast is brought to you in part by mywebdesignservices.com. Quick, easy, affordable websites that look amazing across all devices. For a quote or to get started today, visit mywebdesignservices.com. Welcome to the West Puget Community Connection podcast, where we learn about the people in our community, what they do, and more importantly, why they do it. Our mission is to stimulate community engagement by creating a sense of community and rapport. We do that through interviews and storytelling with locals. You can listen to the podcast for free with unlimited streaming on our homepage at westpugetcommunityconnection.com. Contact us if you're interested in advertising or being featured on the show. And now, without further ado, we bring you this episode of the West Puget Community Connection Podcast. Podcast. 
Hello, and welcome to the West Puget Community Connection Podcast. This is your host, Vincent Alexander, and today we welcome Shay Ling Welch. Shay Ling is a part-time resident of Port Townsend, where she teaches Qigong classes, and I'm looking forward to learning more about Shay Ling's story and how she found her way to the Olympic Peninsula. And I'm curious to learn more about Qigong, which I really don't know anything about. So without further ado, let's say hi to Shay Ling. So hello, Shay Ling, and how are you today? Hi, Vincent. I'm fine, thank you. Great. Thank you for joining us on the phone like this to share your story and some info about Qigong. Yes, of course. So, this is a wonderful way to communicate and to connect people in our community. Thank you for doing it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and you had just uh, expressed to me that you have listened to some of the other interviews on the West Puget Community Connection podcast, so you're, you're a right. bit familiar with what they sound like. Yes. Great. So that being said, um, we usually cover people's life story, and we start in the beginning with where their life began. So um, would you like to tell us where did your life begin? Well, yes. Um, I was born and grew up in China and um, moved to the U.S. In, at the end of 1989. So um, when I was young, I was selected to a local sports center to do gymnastics in my hometown, Sichuan, Zigong City in China. And um, so there I did gymnastics uh-huh. every day after school. About two years later, I was selected to go to a provincial sports center in Chengdu City, also in Sichuan Province, southwest of China. Uh-huh. So there, I became a professional gym- gymnast until I went to college. So in college, I studied kinesiology and physical education. Oh. And I taught at the Sichuan University for about five years before I moved to the U.S. Oh. So, what did, um, can I ask yeah. you, what, what did you teach at the university there in China for five years? Was it the same thing mm. you studied, like kinesiology, or what were you teaching? Kinesiology and physical education, yes. Uh, okay. Neat. And well, what was that experience like for you? Um, did you enjoy it? Was it dreadful? I, yes, it was. It was very nice. I um, I particularly liked being with students, and I like to um, to share what I know, and I like to see the students um, do well in whatever they're learning. And I think. Um, also, the most part that I enjoy during those years of teaching is that I made a very nice connection with many students. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> being a teacher, I also like the, the time off, the summer vacations and winter vacations. Uh-huh. And that was a really nice time for me to um, regroup and uh, have time to do other things. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so you, sounds like your favorite part of teaching during these five years at the university was connecting with the students, and you like to see them do really right. well. And um, so that connection did a lot for you while you were there, connecting with the students. And then um, having uh, breaks like summer times and summertime off and uh, holidays, uh, that seemed to balance balance out well for you too. You got some time to focus on other things. Right. I like to travel and during the vacations, um, in addition to teach, and I like to travel all over China and to see different parts of China. Mm. Um, so I did uh, quite a bit of that. Um, can, I ask, can I ask you a question about your travels in China? Yes. 
I'm really interested in Tibet. Mm-hmm. And I, I understand like mm-hmm. Om, Omdo and Kham are like the, the heartland of Tibet. How did you travel through there and how, how close to that area were you or did you get to see that? You know, that's really um, interesting, Vincent. That part of China I did not get to travel to. I left China at the end of 1989 and it was difficult then still travel from, oh. from inland China to Tibet. Not so easy, so I didn't get to do that part. I see. Was that because of political, mm-hmm. uh, like political? Uh, political, situations? not so much for Chinese people within the country, but mostly the uh, the transportation wasn't there uh, oh. as easily. Yeah, oh. you could get there, but it's not so easy. I see. Okay. Well, that was a sort of a side tour. Um, you can continue. Mm-hmm. So you like to travel, and you traveled all around China. And then you made your way to the U.S., is that right? Right. So um, during the teaching years at the university, and um, I um, met a person who came from U.S. to teach English at the university. And so we became good friends. And um, and then um, this person became my husband. (laughs) And then that's um, awesome. how I um, that's how I came to the U.S. Oh, I never I dreamed see. to live in a foreign country before and met him. Oh, you never had any intention of of moving no. to another country until you no. met him, and then it sounded like a good idea that you guys stuck together and you go see well, what that was all about. We both were young people, and um, my husband taught English, but he had all intention to um, continue his education. So we came back to the U.S. and, and he continued um, his education from there. I see. Yeah. And then moving to the U.S., um, I started to work as a gymnastics coach. Oh. I coached many gymnasts um, in several different states. And I was wonderful. And um, how neat! Yeah. So that's a skill that you have. You can go to really any state in the country, find a gym, and you can yeah. be a gymnastics instructor because you're very skilled in that area. I, it was very, it was very fun and uh, really um, nice to see the girls in the U.S. doing well in gymnastics, and that was really the beginning period of. U.S. women's gymnastics starting to um, to do better and better nowadays, and they are one of the best teams in the world. So when you say this was the beginning of when the American girls team started doing better, um, are we talking about mm-hmm. like the early 90s or the mid-90s, or what year are we talking early about? Early 90s, early uh, 90s, yes, yeah, and then continue on from then. Um, now re- they are doing really well. Sweet. Okay. Uh, Neat. You were you were kind of a part of that. You were helping to improve the gr- women's gymnastics here in in the U.S. It, it was fun. It was really good to see that um, that change through those years and and um, how the coaching and how the gymnastics level um, improving and just during those times. Mm-hmm. Neat. Yeah, it sounds like fun. Um, mm. So you somehow you you got from teaching gymnastics in the U.S. in the early 90s and to discovering Qigong and becoming mm-hmm. a Qigong instructor. I'm curious about that part of your story, how you got from here to there. Mm, yeah, well, um, Raising Children... Um, is a part of the reason that I changed from coaching um, gymnastics to uh, something different. Because raising when you coach own... gymnastics, mm-hmm. raising my own children, yeah, excuse me. Okay. Um, so coaching gymnastics is the kind of job I and mean, then you do after school, and then you also um, go out of town for meets with the team. Uh-oh. And... Um, I had a hard time to balance the two. If I continue to coach, I would not have 
much time to spend with my children after they come home from school. And during the weekends, I, oh. I, I was gone. So, um, so it came to a point that I needed to make a change in mm-hmm. order to have enough time for my own children. I see. Okay, so yeah. the gymnastics routine, the schedule of it, and the demands <laughs> of it were in conflict with being present with your children, being in their lives and spending time with them. Right. So you right. decided it's time to make some sort of change with my work schedule, some sort of professional change, so that way I can be there for my children and also have a career at the same time. Right, yeah. And I, I, I studied a lot of physical... Uh, physiology, anatomy in college, and as well as kinesiology. So um, doing sports for so many years, and I have become very fascinated about how the body works. And I'm very interested at that time and continue to be interested in in Mm. muscular function of the body. So I I learned uh, quite a bit of... of, uh, anatomy and physiology, and also movement. And um, when I decided to change a career, I want to stay with that interest of mine. And so I went to um, study more um, in muscle therapy. And in the U.S., it's under the umbrella of massage therapy. Oh, okay. And I focused on therapeutic massage in orthopedic massage, and neuromuscular therapy area. Okay. So, yeah, and then um, there I worked for a long time. Um, and then I was able to balance the family life, raise children, and with the work schedule as well. Oh, okay, so you found that massage therapy provided a work schedule that that was working for being a mom also. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. you could work during school hours while they were in school, and then when school was over, you could come home and be together as a family, that kind of thing? Yes, yes. And so you were focusing on massage therapy, therapeutic, uh, sounds like orthopedic, mm-hmm. neuromuscular therapy, massage therapy. Right, okay. right, and, um, right. Yeah, what was that like? Was this was this your own private practice? Like, where did you work? Yes. Where where were uh, you at the time that you were doing this? And mm, I was in Chicago, in Illinois during this period of time, and um, I began to uh, work with a doctor and share an office with this um, MD doctor, and she practiced internal medicine, and. Um, and work under the same office, and we often have patients or clients and going in between us. And so that was a wonderful way to work. And I feel um, there are conditions that uh, need the medical doctor, um, medical doctor's care, and also there are cases from doctor to, to me and taking care of the soft tissue um, problems. Mm-hmm. So um, I worked for a long time there. And then eventually um, the practice become um, grow and become bigger. And we uh, moved out where um, I started a, a wellness center and focused on therapeutic massage and, and fitness exercises and from there uh, we just continued Um, I stayed there for about 15 years oh so okay so you so after working in the doctor's office Mm -hmm. you went and created your own independent wellness center in your own location right right and this was also in Chicago Yes, and we lived just outside of Chicago. Actually, the practice was in Oak Park, Oak Park. Chica- in, in Illinois, Oak Park, yeah. And the oh. town where um, Frank Lloyd Wright studio and his workplace and also um, a town, hometown of Hemingway. Oh. So it was really nice 
Most and you say, to so you ran your own wellness center for 15 years in Oak Park. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. so at that time you were still doing massage therapy. How did Qigong mm -hmm. get um, introduced into your life? How did you get involved with that? Well, how I um, discovered Qigong was um, about during the massage therapy period of time, my life was busy raising children and uh, working in a still pretty relative new country. So um, I was pretty stressed out and worn out. Mm. And I was looking for something for self-care. Oh. I had some training in Tai Chi in college. And I taught Tai Chi in China, Japan, and here in the U.S. I liked the slow and dance-like movement of Tai Chi. Uh -huh. But I didn't really give too much thought about Qigong until one day at this point of my busy life and stressed life I was in Chinese bookstore in Chicago Chinatown mm. and then I picked up this book in front of me a book written by Professor Zhang Guangde from Beijing University of Physical Education so I start to read this book a few, bit, uh, a few pages into the book and I couldn't put it down. Hmm. The book was so interesting. It talked about the Chinese medicine and Qigong, uh, different types of breathing techniques and the meridian systems and so on. And I said to myself, and this makes total sense, and it is really what I was looking for. Wow. So huh. about, yeah, about like six months answer. later. About six months <laughs> after. You, so about six months I after found you found book. the book. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I flew to Beijing and I connected with the professor. Oh, really? Professor the author? Mm -hmm. And I began my study of Chinese medicine and Qigong with the Professor Zhang. Wow! So you actually went so right to the author. So that's how I. Mm -hmm. Right to the author of the book that you were inspired by, and flew across the right. world to study with him. Yes. Yes. Gosh, I'm so and impressed with your I, story. I'm so impressed with your story. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. But after I connect to the with the Professor John, I discovered, and he has created the whole system of this type of qigong. So there are many types of Qigong, but this, the first type of Qigong that I learned was created by Professor Zhang, and he has a numerous books, a numerous, the whole complete system. It's just almost like complete Chinese medicine system, but using Qigong movements, breathing okay. techniques and pressure stimulation, pressure points stimulation, and using that method the for whole um, that all, all the whole system work together right. in right. the body. Right, right. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I think it would be, um, I would like to mention Professor John's name one more time, and maybe even the name of that book in case anyone's interested in checking it out. Mm, Professor Zhang Guangde, his name spells... Z H A N G, a second word, G U A N D E at the end, Guangdu, okay. Zhang Guangdu. Zhang anyway, Guangdu. Um, right, and the system of Qigong that he created is called Dao Ying, oh, D A O, D A O, yeah, Y I N, Y I N. Daoying. Daoying Dao is long. This whole system name is very long. Here, here's Daoying and Yang Shen Gong. Yang, A, uh, no, Y A N G. Shen means Z H E N G. Okay. And then so Gong, I got like Daoying, right. 
调音养养养生啊哈，养生功，养生功，嗯哼，功，嗯哼，功 is G O N G， yeah， yeah， like anyway， like, right， exactly， so that's the type of qigong because it's a very long name and it's difficult for people to pronounce and I shortened just call it Dao Yin Gong， Dao Yin， but Dao Yin， right， Dao Yin means to guide to lead。Yang means nourishing. Gong, yang sheng sheng means life, nourishing life. Guidance, or, uh, nourishing life. Guidance, right, and the type of practice. So using your heart, mind to guide the qi to nourish life. It really, it means、uh, something like that. Using anyway, your heart, mind. So it's like mindfulness、mm-hmm. of、uh, being connected to your feelings. Very much so. Yeah, very and much so. And using that guidance and that awareness to nourish、mm-hmm. your life. Yes. Yeah, that's the the name. It means that. So after I connect with the professor John, and I go back to study with him many years in a row. Okay. And I have been practicing qigong ever since. What since? So what, had, was, what, what year was it that you began? That you first went to China to study with Professor John? And this was, I first flew there was nineteen ninety 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 seven. Nineteen ninety seven. I have to think about think about going back <laughs> many years back. Yes. Okay, so since 1997, you've been going I've been back practicing. to Beijing、mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. practicing with Professor Zhang. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Zhang I I learned I learned the whole system from him, and then later, and I also learned other types of qigong from other masters and professors. Oh. Um, but I have been practicing ever since I started.、Uh, I feel this type of exercise or practice being, has been so beneficial to me. Really helped me regain my energy and health. And also,、uh-huh. as importantly, it really helped me as a whole person. Okay. I have gained so much and benefit so much from Qigong. I. I really just see myself continue this practice for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'm hearing your enthusiasm for Qigong. <laughs> it sounds like because it's a per, it's a personal, life changing,、uh, benefit that you've gained from this practice. And it so to recap,、yes. it sounds like,、um, you know, moving back and forth across the world. Or being in the、mm-hmm. U.S., a totally new country, a totally new culture, it was stressful、mm-hmm. for you. It was. Ex- it sounds like it was exhausting.、Um, mm-hmm. Between running the massage therapy business and and being in a foreign land, and you needed s- some self care somewhere in there.、Right. Uh, you weren't.、Right. Your body wasn't getting the rest or the fulfillment that、mm-hmm. it needed in some way in your life. So when you picked up that book、um, by Professor Zhang Guandi. Uh, mm-hmm. It it all made sense to you、uh, from you know studying physio-、uh, physiology and kinesiology. It all made sense to you, and、um, and then you found a pr- suddenly a practice that that worked in the field that you were interested in. A practice you could do that could bring you that peace and that self care. And ever since、yeah. that, you felt better about. You've just felt better, and you knew that this is a lifestyle for me that's going to help me have a. A certain balance and comfort in my life. So, right, right. So you've been practicing qigong ever since. It was c- sort of like the answer. Mm-hmm. You had, you had well, something. Right, right. I think you know there are so many other practices out there, and I just found this, and I found, even though I've been doing it for so many years, I continue to. To learn new things, and almost each practice of my own, 
I um, I learn a little bit more about Qi and more about my own energy and more about learn more about me as a person how how to uh, how to be in touch with nature how to broaden my views and so it's physical exercise but it's also um, it's more it gives me a lot of guidance give me a lot of guidance in, in life yeah a lot of mm-hmm. guidance yeah, yeah. And guidance and nourishment huh absolutely yeah how neat it's really interesting I'm, I feel really curious <laughs> about I experience. hope one day your your experience Qigong and that makes and sense. I feel right. Yeah, when, anyway. when the, yeah, you want to share it with people now. You want to share this healing experience, um, this this um, guidance and nourishment. With well, um, really, how I start to share this with people is that well, I was doing muscle therapy, and other um, clients come to me with aches and pains, some related to. Uh, muscular injuries and other people with just aches and pains all over the body and they don't necessarily have injuries. And because I was practicing for my self-care and I really feel um, a great deal in how much it helps me. And I, one day I just decided to share some Qigong movements with some of my clients. So after each um, body work treatment I give them or I teach them some movements and send them home with the movements and they'll practicing some of uh, clients are very faithfully practicing and those come back and really shows me surprisingly good results with whatever they're going and improvement so and that's how I start to share Qigong basically uh. start with individual clients you had individual because clients. the results mm-hmm. right the results, results were so good mm-hmm. and I just said well let's do a few classes together and um, those individual clients who did Qigong movements with me individually I give them as I get them together as a small group and this way um, it's more mm-hmm. affordable and they can do it more uh, frequently, mm-hmm. and so that's how I started a group class. Oh, so you started with you doing individual mm-hmm. work, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. you started offering group classes so people could do it more consistently, affordably. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's um, I've been teaching group classes for more than 15, 20 years, close to twenty years now. Yeah. Wow. And okay, so now I'd like to touch on your location. I understand you're mm-hmm. a, part, a part-time resident in Port Townsend. So you visit Port Townsend annually or several times a year, it sounds like, and you, and you teach classes mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And then when you're, when right. You're, in Port Townsend, right. Uh, you're based out of Scottsdale, Arizona, correct? R- right. Well, I have moved a few times since I came to the U.S. My husband and I lived in Oregon when we first came from China to the US and my two children were born in Oregon later we moved to Syracuse New York and then Chicago oh. about five years ago we moved to Arizona where my husband took a position at Arizona State University oh. and okay. throughout the years and and of living in different places and we have always um, liked northwest part of the country my husband grew up in Seattle and everyone on his side of the family is still living in Seattle and now one of our daughters also live in Seattle so during the summer summer um, of 19 uh, 2017 sorry we took a road trip and we came to Port Townsend. No um, we really liked the town. And so we, we, we decided to um, have a little, a little place in Port Townsend. Oh, how neat. So now we, 
now we uh, we spent summer there and the holidays there. For example, I I I'm in Port Townsend mostly from mid of May to the end of um, to the beginning of August, and then uh, a whole month of December, I I go there too. I really like Port Townsend. I for some reason, even though I don't really know Port Townsend very well yet, but I feel there is a community of a rich culture. Mm -hmm. that is a little different some other than some other areas mm -hmm. and i I know a few people um around around me in Port Townsend and I feel um, interesting people with interesting experiences oh, yeah. um yeah so and that's really nice feeling to be part of that yeah it's I agree it has a distinct culture mm -hmm. and it's sort of a mm -hmm. magnet. For artists mm -hmm. and um, yeah, ar yeah, artists and progressive thinkers, and um, mm -hmm. it, it makes for mm -hmm. a really interesting place to live. You just never know uh, when you're going to meet someone, and then they start telling you their story, and you go, "Really? Wow!" <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> just lots right. of people like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how you discovered Port Townsend, and now I understand you're here from mid-May to the beginning of August. Mm -hmm. And all of December, mm -hmm. so you're you're mm -hmm. you really are available to our community for anyone who wants to study and practice Qigong. Um, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Last summer was the second summer that I was in this past summer in, in Port Townsend, um, and um, and we run a few classes. The first summer I was there, and um, you know, quite a few people signed up and start to to do this kind of practice with me. Great. And um, I would always be interested to share this kind of practice with whoever interested. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's for me, it's a very uh, rewarding experience seeing um, people learning Qigong. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's, uh, you know, individual one-on-one -on -one and study or working with me or group class. And um, many people uh, are interested to give a try. Mm -hmm. And when they tried and they stayed for a little while and they can really have a better understanding of what really Qigong means. I, I believe there's a lot of book we can read and there's a lot of explanation we can explain to people what Qigong is. Mm -hmm. Until one really tries to do it oneself, and the one can have um, a better understanding, really okay. know what really chi works for you, or how this energy uh, can balance your physical body or your em emotional being uh -huh. um, as a whole person. Yeah. Okay. So um, last summer, which would have been the summer of 2018, was your second summer teaching Qigong mm -hmm. classes in Port Townsend. Right. And, um, and what you've noticed, it sounds like what you've noticed working with new people is when they, like you said, there's lots you can say about Qigong. We can point to a mm -hmm. lot of your books and we can talk about it all day long. But until someone experiences it for themselves, they won't know exactly what it has to offer them. And that's when they ex that's when exactly. they discover the value exactly. of of it for themselves, and it might be mm -hmm. probably a little different for everyone, mm -hmm. I imagine. Right, it is. Yeah, um, it it is involve movements and involve uh, some coordination, but all the movements and all the coordination, it's qigong is not as difficult to learn as people think. Mm -hmm. And it's it's quite simple, but you really have to be um, in that state of body and mind to have a good experience. Mm -hmm. And um, most people start to learn this with me. I don't remember anyone has a negative um, experience from mm -hmm. this kind of practice. So can I ask you this? Um, mm -hmm. When you 
taught Qigong here last summer. Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, would, would that be 2019 that you taught here, or was it 2018 that you taught here? 2018 okay. and 2019. And yeah. 2019. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, mm-hmm. so when you teach Qigong here, um, are you affiliated with any uh, centers here in the area, or are you doing this completely independently, like just picking a location I, and doing it? Or? Right, and basically picking a location doing it. And I, I taught at... Um, a Madrona Body Mind um, Center in uh, Fort Warden, uh-huh. and also um, this this past summer I taught at uh, uh, Sky Dancing, that yoga studio. Um, sky dancing. Sherry, uh, right? Dancing Sky or Sky Dancing Studio? It's a yoga studio. It's very okay. nice, small, uh, intimate stu- studio. Where is it located? Very nice space. It's, I believe, it's on L Street and uh, Cherry. L Street and Cherry. So you taught some classes over there at the yoga studio also. Right. Usually I run like a one-week workshop or uh, six classes. or um, It's all more based on the workshop uh, format that I run classes Got for it. now because I'm not there for yeah. all year round. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Neat. So last summer in 2019, we did um, Qigong for heart health. So um, Qigong is a holistic approach. And no matter what you do, it benefits you, your whole body and your whole being. But uh-huh. uh, there are some movements geared towards to a certain system of the body. For example, we did Qigong for heart health. The movements breathing techniques are designed to improve or maintain a good heart and cardiovascular system of the body. That's what we did last summer. Yeah. I'm curious, does that involve aerobic, more aerobic activity then? (laughs) Very interesting question, yes. It does. Right. No, actually not necessarily in the idea of Western approach of aerobic exercise. But when you do the movements in such a slow pace, you do elevate your heartbeat. And you do feel like your internal um, gets exercise instead of musculature uh, pushing and 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 strengthening that kind of thing. That's a little different. So it's not but necessarily the, like jogging or like really active physical exercise. No, but no, same, no. It, it could be a very graceful, slow movement, but at the same time you notice that your heartbeat is beating more. Absolutely. Oh. Because you're doing a specific, very, very um, specifically designed to strengthen or open the meridians the meridians that connect to your heart and your other vessels that associate with um, heart and cardiovascular system. The meridians, well, it's part of the theory. The meridian systems are like channels of the body. And the channels carry energy. When the energy flows smoothly, so your blood circulation improves or maintains good. Um, So this energy is qi. Qigong is the kind of exercise or practice. Qi is the energy. So while qi is the kind of energy actually is, is is the nice natural substance that flows in our body. Are we talking about blood? (laughs) When I think about a substance that flows through the body and brings energy, blood comes to mind. But chi is not blood, necessarily. Chi is not blood. But without chi, the blood won't circle. Chi is a kind of life force energy. Oh. Oh, right. because if and you were, energy. you could be full of blood, but if you're dead, then your blood's not flowing because you're dead. But <laughs> when, you're, when you're alive, the blood is flowing because of the chi. Because of chi, really, absolutely, yeah. Really, put put it uh, in the plain words is that's that's what it is. 
when your qi flows, your blood moves. When the qi flows, your blood warms. So when your qi flows and your other body fluid moves as well. So in order to have a good balanced blood flow and lymphatic fluid flow, other fluid of the body flow smoothly in the body first, we have to have our qi flow in a balanced, vibrant way. Wow. That is interesting. So, That's something for me to discover yeah. and learn more about. I don't know much about this at the time, but yeah, mm. I'm just being introduced mm. to that concept right now. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, uh, it's been, it's been uh, slowly getting to know by more people from Western culture and countries, uh, but I'm still, I think it's relatively new in, uh, in, um, mm-hmm. in this country. Yeah, there's a lot of, I'm sure there's lots of people who have not really been introduced to it or have a, much of an understanding. I mean, I don't, I don't really have m- mm-hmm. much of an understanding of it. Um, I imagine that this podcast is going to be really fun uh, to listen to for someone who has discovered it recently and is interested in it and wants to learn more about it. And um, hopefully there's lots of those people here in Port Townsend who might look forward to meeting you in December because right now it's October. So we'll have this podcast published within the next week or two and um, shared. So hopefully people will hear it and then they'll be able to attend your whatever classes you have to offer in December. Right. Um, I will I will be running some classes in December. I don't have a detailed schedule yet, but people can can go on my website as we get closer to December and they'll they'll find the schedule and location and other details on my website. And I um also uh, have an uh, Instagram Accounts and Facebook oh yeah, now's a good time. Those. Now's a good time to go ahead and mention. Let's go ahead and mention your website, your Instagram account, mm. and your Facebook mm. page as well. And then I'd like to do that at the end of this again. So just in case mm. anybody misses it right now, they'll get this again at the end of our our call. So okay, um, I know your okay. website because I'm I'm doing so, I'm actually helping you with it. It's hug the moon right. qigong dot com. Qigong dot com. And right. Qigong is spelled Q-I-G-O-N-G. So that's hug yes. the moon, Q-I-G-O-N-G dot com. So that's the website. Right. And then your Instagram right. account is at hug the moon Qigong. Yes. And then your Facebook page, as I, I looked on Facebook, I did a search for Hug the Moon Qigong, and it came right up. So if you search Facebook, Hug the Moon, Q-I-G-O-N-G, it'll pop right up. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, um, the, um, the website is uh, more updated and the uh, Facebook and Instagram accounts, and I, I haven't been using that much. So, um, but I will, uh, I will post the information on there as well. Great. So you're going to be updating your Facebook and your Instagram in the near future here, getting that um, right. Getting the chi flowing. <laughs> 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 That's really well used, Vincent. <laughs> We'll get the chi flowing through the Instagram and the Facebook page as well as the website. Um, now, I'm really fascinated with this concept of what chi is. Mm, and mm, mm. Yeah, well, where does it come from and how... Mm. I'm, I'm, I don't know how much time we should spend talking about this in this podcast in particular, but I'm really curious. And So if there's anything you want to share well, with us about chi and what it is sure, and how it works. Sure, sure. Well, um, when you uh, talk about chi, one can think as energy, right? The energy in that freely flow in nature. And um, everything in nature is... Um, sustained or produced and sustained by this energy flow. And later, the Chinese ancient philosophers integrated this concept 
into the human body, into the Chinese medicine. So the qi in our body is the life force energy. The energy in human body basically comes from three sources. One, our inheritance, like our, our genetic genes that comes from our parents. And this part of the qi stores in our kidney system. And the other part of the qi is um, the air we're breathing in. Oh. So this part of the qi, the, the oxygen and we take in, it requires your lungs and your other parts of the body system to function, to work well, and then take in and change into the kind of energy our body needs, uh -huh. the qi. And then the third source of qi is, um, is the food and liquid we take in, we consume. And that part of energy requires the stomach and the spleen function to change the food and drinks we take in into part of qi to support other organ function, to balance everything else. So those are the basic three sources of qi in the human body. Of course, this is a very, very complicated and complex work within the body and how it works, one supports the other. But uh -huh. those, the basic three um, sources of qi that we, our whole energy system is um, coming from. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing that. That's really interesting um, perspective on life force energy because um, mm -hmm. I've had my own way of thinking about life force energy and so mm -hmm. now I'm being introduced to, I don't know, maybe a new one or maybe I'm just taking a different route to the same understanding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. So, it's, um... It's oh, sorry. What were you going to say? kind of practice. I was going to say <clears throat> it's kind of practice that helped me physically mentally and um, emotionally as person, also spiritually. It's uh -huh. just uh, very broad. Just good medicine, um, huh? Good medicine, yeah. yes. And um, so <clears throat> Tai Chi, I've heard of Tai Chi also. And um, what's the difference mm. between Tai Chi and Qigong? Well, Tai Chi, <clears throat> excuse me, both Tai Chi and Qigong are ancient exercises that have been practiced for thousands of years. I think both practice develop and cultivate qi, this energy. And both um, practices strengthen and balance the qi. But Tai Chi is a form of martial arts. Tai Chi movements are created for combat. So every movement Every movement has, has its um, purpose of defense or offense, if you oh, will. Oh, okay. That's a completely mm -hmm. different... Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's but a the, completely different frame than... Right, right. Gone. But the roots are from the same um, ancient qi and energy theory. Oh, okay. So practice Tai Chi is also... Um, has a benefit to our energy, our qi flow. Okay. And so later people use Tai Chi as exercise. For example, people in this country, um, I wouldn't say 100%, but most people in this country practice for, for exercise purposes, and some people like the martial arts aspect of Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. But Qigong, on the other hand, was created for health purposes from the very beginning. Okay. More than 2,000 years ago, the Chinese medicine doctors um, give patients herbs for, um, for their illnesses, but also prescribe certain Qigong movements oh. to improve their health. Right. So Just Qigong like a is completely... Would 
physical yeah, therapist yes. to give you tips on yeah. how to bend over or, or um, my physical how to bend over, how to me, stretch. Um, look up to the sky, greet the sky. She said, put your hands up, look at the sky, and say, hi, sky. So it's a movement. <laughs> right, reverse. right. It's called a reversal. So that makes sense mm-hmm. that they were prescribing movements to help improve mm-hmm. their health. Mm-hmm, right. And Qigong movements is also very easy to learn, easy to practice. It doesn't require as much space as Tai Chi. Um, so really, there's no equipment involved. The mm. equipment is your body and your energy, your okay. Qi. Right. Neat. So those are the basic differences between Tai Chi and Qigong, I think. All right. Well, it is 12.31 p.m., and so right. we're coming up on an hour. Um, I wonder how much, m- m- how much more ground we might be able to cover here before we wrap up our call. Or um, mm. would you like to continue telling us more about Qigong, or would you like to... Um, are you feeling tired and wanting to finish up the call? How, how much longer do you think you could go for it's okay. I just want to mention that um, the Qigong kind of practice, people sometimes have the idea of this is a kind of practice only for older people. Oh. And it is, it is a very good exercise or practice for, for older people. Uh-huh. And low, low impact on joints, or no impact on joints. No impact. But also, right, there's no, because every movement, and you can adjust to your own comfort level. Okay. And, and older people practicing to strengthen their vitality mm-hmm. and to strengthen their muscles at the same time and also yeah. has ability to improve their stability and flexibility, all that kind of like good their stuff. Your balance. Their balance, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, if one practice regularly, can really elevate one's spirit okay. because Qigong practice, it comes from the philosophy um, about how nature, how energy flow in nature should be natural, should be effortless. Mm-hmm. And when you are practicing a while and then you really become part of nature and you blend yourself with the nature energy flow. So spiritually, people can benefit as well as their physical and mental benefit. Wow. And for cool. young people, practice. Uh-huh. And for young people. Young too. people, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a hard um, concept for people to, to understand or have young people start this kind of practice. Actually, Qigong practice can really help enhance the mental and physical development, particularly mental development. Okay. And therefore, and improve all kinds of things that the, uh, the young people would do, the concentration level, and bring the calmness um, in them. And um, so, and as well as for mid-age people, mm-hmm. manage stress, for oh, yeah. example, use Qigong as a way of managing the stress. We know stress can cause a lot of um, illness. Uh-huh. And um, with that, really can, can do a lot. Practice uh, regularly, this um, Qigong can really help better quality of sleep uh-huh. and everything else around, I believe. So it's really good practice for Everyone or everyone. anyone interested. Yeah. All ages, yeah. I can. Um, I can. It just seems like it would be. Um, I've seen people doing qigong, and um, with the awareness of the life energy, mm-hmm. um, I get this sort of. I, I see. I've never. I've never tried it. I've never practiced it. But I can. Mm-hmm. I just get this kind of mm-hmm. image of. Um, being like balancing and being very aware of what my body's doing and then also mm-hmm. noticing what my mind's doing it's almost like yeah. um yoga combined with meditation or something and yeah. and then to consider really that life energy is flowing through 
all the living things around me, the grass I'm standing on, the trees that are sweeping back and forth, we're all seeking balance and we're all striving to grow and to thrive at the mm-hmm. same time. In that mm-hmm. moment, you're right there with everything that's alive that's around you and we're all doing the same thing, just trying to grow and trying to be balanced and healthy. You sound very well, uh, Vincent, I think. Um, you know, a lot of people... A lot of people start with me with some kind of ailments in their body going on. So they have a goal of improve their health. And that's a wonderful thing to do. It's really a good, um, a good component as their, as their care, for, for their, their care, in addition to their medical doctor's care. But I think... One of my goal is to really continue to share this hope that people will use this as a preventive care instead of after being sick and then start. Of course, you can really, if you practice diligently, you can just use Qigong, especially the type of Qigong, we call it medical Qigong, to correct some of the ailments or slowing down the progression but really would rather prevent illness than... Yeah, that makes sense. So it's a, afterwards. a healthy practice for all ages. Um, yes. Something we, can, something we can make a healthy practice out of, and it'll, it'll do a lot, will benefit mm-hmm. from it, it'll do a lot of good for us. So, I'm, so right. I am very curious to learn lots more about this, and I'm, I bet there's some listeners on who are really interested in Qigong, and they want to hear more, learn more about... Qigong from you, an expert. Um, maybe we can do uh, another podcast another time, or maybe um, maybe we they can learn more on your Instagram account or your Facebook page because you're going to be posting a lot of right. a lot of new yeah. content on your Instagram and, and your Facebook page. So there would be a lot of uh, neat stuff to learn there. Um, Good. Yeah. Do you have any requests? Yeah. Do you have any requests for a community? I always like to finish finish our, a, a podcast with requests for the community, you know, anything that that would be helpful for you in mm-hmm. your life mm-hmm. that the community well, could, if they're willing, you know, to, to help with that. Right. Well, if anybody listen, listening to this and is interested, and they can go on our website, which is hackthemoonqigong.com to, to, to get information and they can also go on our webs, uh, go on our Facebook and Instagram to to like our um, our Instagram or um, Facebook page, and that would be wonderful. That would be greatly appreciated. Wonderful, yeah. I hope lots of people do that. Go ahead and like the Hug the Moon Jigong Facebook page. Follow on Instagram. Take a look at the website and. See when Shailing is going to be in Port Townsend in December. Maybe you can take a class, have a first-time experience with Qigong. Sweet. Yes. Thank Wonderful. you so much for your time here today, Shailing. And thank um, you, Vincent. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing all this with us. And um, well, I look forward to meeting you when you visit Port Townsend in December. Me too. Me too. Thank you very much, Vincent. Oh. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good day, and uh, talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the West Puget Community Connection podcast. Be sure to catch the next episode. Sign up for our email list at westpugetcommunityconnection.com, and you'll be notified when new episodes are published. And if you're interested in advertising or being featured on the show, you can contact us through our website as well, westpugetcommunityconnection.com. The West Puget Community Connection podcast is brought to you in part by mywebdesignservices.com. Quick, easy, affordable websites that look amazing across all devices. For a quote or to get started today, visit mywebdesignservices.com. The West Puget Community Connection podcast. This is where we learn about the people of our community. We learn what they do, and more importantly, why they do it. 
Subscribe by email at westpugetcommunityconnection.com. We look forward to learning more about you.